How come nobody is talking about cyber attack? Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. The events of the last 24 hours are the death knell for Russia-Europe relations. This may well be the event that precipitates the complete dissolution of NATO and the all-out escalation of chaos in Europe. You know, this event was so substantial, in my mind anyways, that I messaged Survival Lily uh, Elizabeth over at the Survival Lily YouTube channel last night at like 2 a.m. And I said, look, this is going to get real bad. This is about to get real nasty. This is a sign of the complete breakdown of uh, diplomatic relations. This one diplomatic bargaining tool now virtually is no longer existent. There was a time when the gas flows had been suspended due to geopolitical reasons. But now, the actual physical capability for Europeans to get the life-sustaining natural gas that they need to get through this winter no longer exists. Like, I mean, it, it just simply does not exist anymore. Now, we're going to talk about how this happened, who might be implicated in it, what the causes are going to be, all those things. And this is all speculation because information is still coming out about the incident. But this is something which is, at least as far as I know, well within the realm of cyber attack capability. We've seen this with the Colonial Pipeline ransomware incident. We've seen very suspicious liquid natural gas explosions and incidents of some of the biggest uh, natural gas facilities in the United States and Russia in recent months, which of course the media didn't say much about uh, but the media is painting this narrative now that it had to be depth charges it was special ops it was submarines it was missiles not one of them on either side both western or eastern is speculating that this could have been a cyber attack and it's almost like they're trying to frame you know right out the gates this is what they usually do they they kind of implant in people's brains what the possibilities are, the range of uh, feasible possibilities, plausibilities, if you will, about the situation. And it starts to look like perhaps this wasn't kinetic, physical at all. Um, if it was, of course, the question is, who did it? Was it the Russians? Was it the Brits? Was it the United States? Was it the Ukrainians? Was it the Germans themselves? All sides are beginning to question who did this. Now, what we know is that this now has basically terminated this one remaining major bargaining tool between Russia and Europe. And that means that the suffering that is going to ensue in, in Europe with the cost of living crisis is now baked in. It's now guaranteed. Like there's no other diplomatic channels, off ramps. This means that you are going to see social upheaval in Europe, you're already seeing it. You're seeing governments fall. Um, not maybe that's a little too uh, sensationalist, but you're seeing, uh, you know, prime ministers resign. You're seeing the election of populist governments. So you're already starting to see the fracturing of NATO, and this is a big, big problem for the Baltic states. And this is what they were so worried about. They are worried that Germany, France, and all the big players within NATO are going to falter in their support of this war are right around the time when they really need it, right around the time when the Russians are mobilizing millions of troops, uh, that these Baltic states, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Poland, uh, this is when they're going to be at their most vulnerable. Because is NATO even going to be a thing is something that people need to be asking at this point. The whole thing is imploding. I mean, yes, you could look at Russia right now and you could see uh, people uh, fleeing the country through these choke points. I've, I've still yet to determine how much of that is due to the fact that so many countries have closed their borders, that the Russians are, are funneling out in these uh, more concentrated countries that are still allowing them to leave. But there's definitely chaos in Russia as well. But there's equally amount of chaos in Europe. I mean, that's undeniable. Uh, the governments there have already, you know, like Boris Johnson is a great example of that. He's already, they're already toppling. So if that happens, 
then that that would be the ultimate 4D chess move was for Russia to take down NATO, take down the NATO alliance. And where where's Article 5 then? Then Article 5 is not a concern. Then you just keep moving westward. Now, people are speculating that this might have been the United States that did this. People are speculating the Russians are keeping... They've thrown it out there that this might be sabotage. But it's really the Western media who is characterizing this as uh, likely an attack by either the Russians or the Ukrainians. But nobody is really mentioning the United States. So who would have the capability? What nation state would have the capability to have the cyber security tools or cyber uh, attack tools to pull off something like this, to pull off a major hack if it was a hack? Who would have the weapons? Only a handful of countries would actually have the weapons to do this. But this is a major, major incident, which is going to, it could potentially be a black swan event, but it's going to be a silent one. Because, well, right now, of course, around the world, people are just struggling with their own issues everywhere. It doesn't matter what continent you're on. I mean, the Ukraine war is back burner for a lot of people. But like I've said, it is the black hole that is going to consume all of us. Now, they're calling this destruction of these pipelines three within one day unprecedented. Now, could it have been a, a cascading series of failures? It's possible. It's possible that one failure contributed to others, but that's being perhaps op naively optimistic in saying that. But the time frame for restoring these things is uh, long game. Okay, they're talking about months. I mean, they can't even agree to fix a turbine, much less an undersea pipeline. I'm curious to see if this thing's going to light on fire somehow. You know, I mean, it's one match away from being the gates of hell, virtually. They're saying that Germany and the EU are not phased by this because they're no longer dependent on natural gas supplies. But we're going to see about that come winter, come spring. The economic contraction that is going to ensue as a result of the colossal increase in gas prices due to relying primarily on liquefied natural gas is going to be astronomical. And I do believe that you're going to see lots of civil unrest. You're going to see governments fall. And this could be, this could be the, the grandmaster chess move to destroy NATO from the inside out. And this is always, you know, the, the best way you can win a war, like Sun Tzu said, is without fighting. This is why, you know, the economic hitmen of the world, they try to, they try to destroy countries from the inside out first before going to war with them. Because it's much easier if you can just put in a puppet government. Now, another but one potential motive for the Russians doing this, and the only motive I can see for them doing this, was it might create a little bit of sense of urgency in the Europeans that, okay, now we have to cooperate with Russia because we still wanted to have this lifeline open just in case. You know, now it's not there. It's simply not there. Now, even if they decide to go to the negotiating table, which is very unlikely, uh, it's not even a possibility anymore. But it's nice to kind of have it as a possibility. See, this is the problem with so many belligerents in one conflict where you have Russia, Ukrainian interests, you have Eurozone interests, you have uh, United States interests. There's too many belligerents. You're never going to come to uh, to an amicable... <sighs> it's like, uh, you know, you have... You're arguing with a friend and then another friend gets involved and takes the side of another person. Even if you and that friend are able to work things out, if you have this other person who's constantly egging the other person on, then you're never going to reach uh, some sort of um, reconciliation with the issue. So it's looking like the situation is, is virtually untenable right now. I cannot foresee how the situation gets resolved. It appears that Europe is going to erupt in, in chaos soon, and people need to prepare for it. Uh, the only real 
thing that could maybe bring everybody out of this is like war mobilization. Every all countries going into some kind of war economy, and uh, that's how they're going to bring us out of recession. They're already talking about doubling, tripling military spending at a time of giant deficits, money printing, debt. So where's all the money going to come from, right? So I think Europe is in trouble now. And something is going on. All we need to know, all you need to know, is that this this is the death knell for, for Europe and Russia relations for the foreseeable future. It's not going to get any better. It's no coincidence this happens right around the same time as the mobilization, right around the same time as the Iranians are looking at a potential uprising in their country, which appears to be gaining steam. I don't know how serious it is. I know there is a... It's looking like it could be some civil war, potentially. I mean, the the West has tried to subvert the Iranians before and failed many times, but this could be it. And all these things are happening at the same time. And here, we're just in the la la land. Here, we just presume that nothing bad will ever happen. Normal see Norman. But guys, the price of most commodities is global. Without natural gas to Europe, their industry suffers. That increases demand everywhere else in the world. That means prices go up everywhere else in the world. And this is the one time, at least to the best of my knowledge, where the fight has now been taken outside of Ukraine, where we're seeing, if this was sabotage, we're seeing a, an attack on a country who is not directly involved in the conflict. We've seen attacks with inside Russia, but we've never seen an attack outside Ukrainian soil or Russian soil. This is the first, and this could be the first of many, attacking one of the most critical of critical infrastructures that Europe relies on is a major, major point of escalation that is not getting enough attention. Something is going on and it doesn't look good. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And uh, this situation is currently evolving. It's ongoing. So by the time I release this video, chances are a lot more information will come out. So uh, feel free to post that information in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Canadian Prepper out.